Hello Helldivers and welcome to another Helldivers 2 news video. Today, the major order is not going well. What's the real easiest way of winning it? Some great suggestions to improve the game, an update is coming very soon and is Helldivers 2 coming to Xbox? But before we get into that, if you want to stay up to date on the latest and greatest in Helldivers 2, make sure you hit the like and subscribe to the channel. Now let's go! A recent claim from an insider suggests that Helldivers 2 could make its way to Xbox someday. Given that Sony Interactive Entertainment is the publisher of Helldivers 2, the release of an alleged Xbox port would mark a major shift in strategy for the console manufacturer. On the latest episode of the Xbox Era podcast, Notable Insider claims that he's heard very, very early preliminary discussions about the possibility of Helldivers 2 coming to Xbox, with the new interim CEO, Hiroki Tutoki, recently taking charge of Sony Interactive Entertainment, the insider suggests that the PlayStation executive may be a little more open to experimenting with aggressive multi-platform strategies. This comes from GameRant and of course I've posted the link to the article in the sources section of the description of this video. And look, I've always despised the idea of console exclusives because they just feel so anti-consumer. Oh, you wanna play Spider-Man 2? Well, tough luck, you don't have a PlayStation 5, better go and buy that PlayStation 5. Well, I'm not. With Sony as the publisher, I'm sure they will still still get a ton of money if they release it to Xbox as well and it would just make sense so I like the way this interim CEO is thinking and I hope this actually does get through. Helldivers 2 has pretty much become a cultural phenomenon and you can see even people who play World of Warcraft playing Helldivers 2 which is so nutty. And imagine what this would mean for the industry as a whole since Helldivers 2 is still a live service game which means that other studios will look towards it when they're making their live service model. I've always loved the idea of the consumer base voting with our wallets and you can see that this is working now because a new pass in Helldivers costs you 10 bucks. New armor sets don't cost you all that much, between 2 and 6 dollars, which is not that crazy when you consider that Destiny 2 sells these sets for like 20 bucks. If Arrowhead stay on the right track, this will end up improving everybody's gaming experience and will finally stop getting nickel and dimed from every game out there, which has been happening for the past like 5 years. So with the slim chance of someone from Sony actually noticing this video, please make this happen, we need our ODSD reinforcement. What do you guys think about this subject? Make sure you tell me about it in the comments below. We also have possibly a big update coming fairly soon to us. So there's a website where you can check if any Steam game was recently updated and interestingly enough the release 1 RC backup for Helldivers 2 was updated two days ago on the 22nd of April. The community has noticed that this is something that happens whenever the game goes through a big update. So what does that mean? Personally, I think this is just some patches, bug fixes and whatnot. But but since we've been talking about the Illuminate so much for the past couple of weeks, does that mean they're finally coming? Maybe sooner than we expected. We can never know for sure what is in this update and until we actually get it, it would mostly be speculation, but I would not be surprised if something huge comes out right after I release the video or maybe 30 minutes before that. I'm not saying this because I know anything, it's just that has been my luck for the past couple of videos. And we are back to the major order talking about how most likely we're not going to succeed and why. We have a day and a half to successfully defend six more planets and this is looking more hopeless than ever. The automatons have pushed through seven sectors which is so crazy, people just do not want to fight these bots. Things are so hopeless and I've noticed that there's fewer players than usual in the game at any given point. It just seems like a a big part of the Helldiver score has given up, which is very disheartening to see. What's making me kind of mad is that this order was very much winnable because we had so much time, we had 4 days to complete it. But the problem is nobody knew where to attack and we were just scattered all across the map. And we have this post from Dude Tortoises Hop which outlines why the bot defenses have been failing. People on the bug front pretty much like to stick to one planet until it's liberated, while people on the bot front do not really have the same policy. And also pretty much two thirds of the player population fights bugs more than they fight bots, which is kind of obvious because, you know, bots shoot back. And I am sure that the Starship Troopers roleplay does have some little part in 
that too. But I'll keep it a stack with you, I also think that not seeing the supply lines in game is a big big problem when it comes to these things. Most of the community does not even know about supply lines and that they are such a big part of the game and we have to use companion apps like for example helldiverscompanion.com and we can use this knowledge to strategically cut off our enemies advances at certain planets by making sure we liberate the planet which is right in the middle of other planets and cutting off the supply lines there. In my last video I did have a lot of people suggest for us to be able to vote on which planets we liberate next and basically be able to prioritize them that way in game but I don't think that can happen or if it did happen it wouldn't be anytime soon. What is really necessary and I really hope we get it very 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 soon is that we should be able to see the supply lines in game on the galactic war map and possibly have some sort of an option where it allows you to simulate what would happen if you cut off that supply line to that particular planet. This way people would understand the galaxy war map much better. And of course we need better hints. Last time I clicked on the hints button it says nothing about all of these things and they're supremely important to the war effort. But that's just what I think. What do you think about this? Make sure you shout off in the comments below. Next up a suggestion which I believe makes a whole lot of sense. Defense campaigns should give helpful modifiers instead of negative ones. We already have the planet and its defenses should aid the hell divers such as free SEAF artillery rounds or AA defenses lessen but dropship quantity. And I think this is a great suggestion because, well, first, nobody likes those negative modifiers, and second, it would make a whole lot of sense that if we are defending a planet, we also have raised defenses, which means that the roleplay of the game will be improved, and I gotta be honest with you, a lot of people love roleplaying as Helldivers. I'm not gonna post anything here, but I'm sure you've seen some videos of people taking this a little bit too far. Next up, another suggestion from the Pengu, who's been cooking as it comes to making new mission suggestions for the game. And this mission suggestion consists of Helldivers carrying an explosive ordnance throughout an underground terminate hive. Two divers would need to carry the big boom booms as the two other divers help them out. Helldivers must secure a payload before carrying it to the underground destination. Although the terrain functions as a conventional above ground map, there is a small segment of cavern. The underground drop point is located at the end of this rocky passage. Given the orbital nature of Hellpots, stratagems cannot be used underground, strengthening reliance on supply stratagems in team composition. The cavern is wide enough to support fair 4 player combat and short enough that it does not overstay its welcome. Once the drop point is reached, the payload must be armed, giving Helldivers 2 minutes to escape the cave. Escape is optional to the success of the mission. I featured Pengu's ideas before, but I gotta say, I think this is probably his best one. He also outlines that the Helldivers who carry the payload can only use single hand weapons. Which does make a whole lot of sense because, well, one of your hands will already be occupied with carrying the explosives. I just love the theme of this mission idea and I also love the execution. It's very simple but it also makes a whole lot of sense as it comes to lore and all of that stuff and it's just fun. And since the Helldivers Twitter has already responded to the Pengu before, I believe they're keeping a close eye on this person and maybe they'll finally get a job at the studio, which I think would be really cool. It would just make for a great community moment. So Arrowhead, if by some slim margin of chance you're listening to this, hire the Pengu as a game designer. Next up we have the true war of the game. We need to coordinate and work together to win the major orders and it's a video game I'll play however I want. And this just encapsulates the Helldivers 2 community so well because most people I think do want to win the major orders but there's a whole bunch of people who don't care about them and they just want to play the game. And I gotta be honest and this is not going to come as a surprise to anybody who's been watching my videos for a while but I'm on the side of coordination and working together to win major orders because at the end of the day this is pretty much the point of the game. It's a coordinated war effort where we win a war by fighting together. It's for sure my favorite aspect of Helldivers 2 and it just creates such incredible community moments like that time when we finally took the creek or that time when we killed 2 billion bugs in 12 hours when the expected completion was for like what 6 days? But which team are you a part of? Next up know your enemy. Make sure you save this picture because it's actually a great guide for you to be taking down factory striders. Number 1 destroy those turrets. Number 2 know the weak points neck joint, eye slit, rear hatch, heat sinks. 
Suspected EMP weakness. Strip that armor and shoot in the gut, Helldiver. This is the best guide for taking down factory striders and I gotta tell you, for me, what's been working out best is to go under the strider and just start shooting at that belly. And also, make sure you get an autocannon in your team if you're doing an automaton mission because it does wonders against these guys. And to finish this all off, orbitals shouldn't get a much lower cooldown. They should get way more destructive. Recently, there have been many posts complaining about how weak the orbitals are compared to the ego stratagems and I agree, but in many posts you see the suggestion to reduce the cooldown of the orbitals. There, I disagree. I have the opinion that the orbitals and the egos should fulfill two different roles and just reducing the cooldown of the orbitals makes them more similar, thus competing for the same usage in your loadout. In my opinion, the ego should have fast, medium strength effects that are very useful against small groups of infantry and small outposts. In contrast, the orbitals should have a much higher cooldown, but are really good against objectives and large groups of infantry. Egos should be usable whenever you want to use them, and orbitals should kill all, destroy all, but you really have to pick the right moment to use it. And the post goes into greater detail, mentions stuff that I kind of disagree with, but at the end of the day it's not such a bad idea. I am working on a tier list video for stratagems because, you know, obviously I'm a YouTuber so I kinda am obligated to do this contractually, but you notice that the orbitals do get very low grades in my tier list. And the person who made this post is absolutely right, an orbital rail cannon strike should for sure destroy a bio titan in a single shot. It already has a very high cooldown and the OP of the post suggests that we give the orbitals even higher cooldowns which I don't agree with. I think the orbitals should have better tracking and maybe a little bit of higher damage because they already do quite a lot but it's still just comparable to the ego airstrikes. Ego airstrikes are in a great position at the moment, the orbitals just need to have a better payoff since they already have big cooldowns and you cannot use them in succession the same way you can with ego strikes so it just would make sense for them to do more damage and to have more reliable tracking. And no, this doesn't mean the ego strikes are overpowered and need to be nerfed, instead it means that the orbitals are underpowered and need to get buffed, just so there's no confusion here. But I am interested, what do you guys think about this, so make sure you tell me in the comments below. And that was about it for the video guys, I hope you really liked it, if you did make sure you hit the like and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.